Hi everyone, in this video I will be installing the latest version of Ubuntu in a dual boot setup with Windows without using a USB drive or DVD media. So first download Ubuntu, go to ubuntu.com and then go to products, Ubuntu desktop and then download Ubuntu and download the latest version, the latest LTS version and download. And after it's done downloading, I'm going to open up Disk Management. And I have here my C drive for Windows. And I'm going to shrink this to make room for Ubuntu and for the Ubuntu ISO image that I downloaded. So I'm going to my Downloads folder and click on the file. And we see the size. And it's about 5.77 gigabytes or about 6,000 megabytes. So going back to disk management, and I am going to allocate 50 gigabytes for Ubuntu and six gigabytes for the ISO image. So that's 56 in total. Right click, shrink volume, and I'll shrink it by 56,000, shrink. All right, we have the unallocated space, and now I'm going to create a new simple volume, next. And this is gonna be for the ISO image I just downloaded, so 6,000 megabytes, next, next. And the file system will be FAT32. And the volume label, have it as ISO, next, finish. Now I'm gonna copy all the contents from the ISO into the D drive here. Go back into my downloads folder and I'm going to mount this. You can hit enter or right click and mount. Open. All right, so we see here it's the F drive and we're going to copy all of this. And go back to the D drive, paste. Okay, it has completed. And now I'm going to eject. I don't need the ISO anymore. I'm going to now change this to an EFI system partition instead of a basic data partition. It may work without the change, but to be thorough, I'm going to change it. Start, command prompt, run as administrator. Yes, go to disk part, list your disk, select disk zero, list the partitions, and select partition five. And we're going to change the ID on it. I'm going to type in help space set and scroll up. And so I want to identify this new partition type as an EFI system partition. So we'll copy and set ID equals C12, etc. And we'll go back to disk management. We see that it has changed. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. Hit delete. All right, I am in the BIOS and first thing I'm gonna to go to is security and go to secure boots and ensure secure boot is disabled afterwards. And in my BIOS here, I can directly boot Ubuntu from here. It does a scan and automatically sees that there's another EFI partition to boot other than Windows and it's labeled as UFI OS. In some other BIOSes, you may need to specify the location and if that is not available, you can boot it from the UFI shell. You may have a UFI shell option and you can go into it. So I'm going to boot it now. All right, it has booted up Ubuntu desktop and we get the grub menu here. So I'm going to try or install Ubuntu. And here it is of how to load it from the UFI shell. In the BIOS, I have it here listed as built-in EFI shell as one of the boot options. All right, the UFI shell comes up and I am currently at the prompt here. And the uh, first command I'm gonna type in is map, M-A-P, just to show the mapping table. And I can use page up and page down to scroll up and down through the buffer. And so what I'm looking for is the mapping table for the file systems. And so we'll begin with, for example, FS0, FS1, FS2, etc. And what you need to do is go through each one to find the one that has the ISO, the Ubuntu ISO. 
And for me, I'm pretty sure it's going to be FS1, so I'm going to go into that, FS1. And then I'm going to type in vol, V-O-L, to get details about the volume. And we can see it's labeled ISO, so this is the one, and the total disk space, so that is 6,000 megabytes there. And I can do a DIR, and it'll list the contents. And we can see here that it is the Ubuntu ISO. And I'm going to go into the EFI directory, then go into boot. And then I'm going to load the grubx64.efi file. All right, and we can see grub comes up, and I'm going to try or install Ubuntu. All right, it's booted into the install media, and we got the welcome screen. Now, when dual booting with Windows, I generally create another EFI partition for the new OS, as Microsoft doesn't like it when there are other OSs in its created EFI partition, which can be an issue later on. So the Ubuntu installer generally doesn't allow you to use a different EFI partition, but there is a workaround. So I'm going to close the welcome screen, open up terminal, sudo in, fdisk-l, and I'm going to scroll up and I'm looking for my disk, and here's my disk, and I just want to copy this, and go into parted for your disk, which is partition editor and then P to print. And so here's my EFI system partition for Windows, and I'm going to remove the boot flag. Set partition one, boot off. P, and we see it's been removed. Now after the install, I am going to put it back on. And also as well as there is my six gigabyte partition, which is the Ubuntu install media and it also has the, the boot flag that was put in earlier which I did in disk part so I'm going to remove this as well otherwise the Ubuntu installer will get confused and print and then exit quit close and now I'm going to run the installer next 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 interactive next default next third party and additional media format next Manual installation, next. All right, and here's the free space, add. And you can do the different mount points. I'm gonna keep it simple, just do slash, and I'm use the entire space, hit okay. And we see here automatically that it has allocated 1.13 gigabytes for the new EFI partition, and then here's slash for everything else, and then hit next, create your account. Time zone. And here's the summary, and you can install. And at the bottom right, there's a terminal icon. You can click on it, and it'll show the status. And you can click on it to go back. Installation completed. Close. Open up terminal. Sudo in. Go into parted again. P print. And I'm going to put the boot flag back on partition number one, P, quit. Now I'm going to type in EFI boot manager dash V to check the boot order. So the boot order is zero, two, three. So first is going to be Ubuntu, second is going to be Windows boot manager, and three is UFI OS which is the Ubuntu installation media. So I'm going to restart my computer and to confirm the boot order, I am going to go into the BIOS. So I'm going to go into the boot and going down, I'm going to the UFI NVMe drive BBS priorities. And we see here in my case, even though that it said earlier that it was going to boot Ubuntu, we see here that boot option number one is the Windows boot manager. So for me, I have to change it to Ubuntu in order for it to go into Ubuntu. Now others, Lenovo, for example, has a boot order lock that has to be disabled, and HP also has something similar. So it's always good to go into the BIOS to double check the boot options to confirm that it will boot Ubuntu as expected. I'm going to hit Escape and Save Changes and Reset. 
And now it's booted into Ubuntu, and I'm going to set up Grub so that I can do a boot with Windows. I'm going to open up a terminal, sudo in, put your password, and now I'm going to do a Grub install, target x86, 64, and then the EFI directory, and then recheck. All right, installation finished, no errors. Now I'm going to go into the default Grub configuration file using nano, and I'm going to scroll down and look for grub disable OS prober equals false, remove the hash, hit control X to exit, save, yes, enter. And so this will allow to detect other OSs. Now I'm going to type in OS prober. All right, so it's detected the Windows boot manager, so that is good. And now I'm going to do a grub make config, which will include the Windows boot manager. All right, it's added it in and it's found the Windows Boot Manager and now reboot. All right, we see here Grub comes up as expected. So we got Ubuntu and we got the Windows Boot Manager down here. So that is good. And just going to go into Ubuntu. All right, it goes into Ubuntu as expected. And now I'm going to do it for Windows. All right, it's booted into Windows, going to log in. Go into Disk Management. All right, and the D drive here with Ubuntu installation media, we no longer need it. So I can right click on it, delete volume. Yes. And now I'm going to extend my C drive to recover the space. Next, finish, and it's extended. All right, so that's it. That's how you can install Ubuntu in a dual boot setup with Windows without using a USB drive. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.